<laughs> Gonna do this old school first. out there, they've been sexually abused, they've been raped, they've been incested, and that are due a time in prison. Their only, only reason for being in prison is because they were sexually abused as children. This is for them. They need their children. They're pregnant in prison, which is, I can't even imagine. They're shackled, shackled to bed. And, and when they're in pain, they can't get any pain meds because the guards say that they're the, the guards say that they're they're faking it. They're pregnant. I thought pregnancy was maybe like you know, boy in the beginning and at the end. You know, maybe a little bit pain. Maybe I need a painkiller too. Uh, no. Pregnancy is pain every fucking day. Oh my god, I was so sick at first. You can use Monday.com to boost your team's efficiency. These women, they can't get any painkillers because the guards got them shackled to the bed, got them fucking, not just their, their, their hands to the bed, but they're shackled on their feet, their ankles are in those um, iron things that the words escaping me right now while they're pregnant and, and in labor. Sisters, can you hear me? They're pregnant, they're in labor, and they're like chained by all of their limbs to the bed frame. They can't move. And they want more pain meds and they're not allowed to give them to them because what i don't know and all of their children are taken from them one by one and they never give them back and those kids are put in the foster system and those kids in the foster system are physically abused or sexually abused and you want to know what happens to them when they get to be eight-year-old little girls and they try and run away from the foster system they wind up as prostitutes on the street and you want to know what happens to those little girls, those eight-year-old little girls that are out running around on the street and being prostitutes? They get addicted to drugs. They get pregnant multiple times. They get trapped in a horrible cycle of violent relationships where nearly kill them. Women who have had their throats slit. I have seen those women. I have seen those women, and they are in prison for what? Some of them steal mascara. 
Yep. Yep, I knew a woman who was in Lancaster County Prison in solitary confinement for a year because she had stolen mascara. She had stolen mascara. A black woman, not a white woman. There, was, there were white women in the solitary confinement too. But this black woman who had been abused since she was three by brothers, family members, and everything. <clears throat> she was in solitary confinement for a year without any medical care, no mental health care, no psychiatric care, nothing. For, <sighs> I mean, they don't even feed you right down there. <sighs> Sisters, you need to tell me. You need to tell me how you feel about this because I'm upset. They have stolen my daughter. Stolen my daughter. They stole her. They've taken her away even though I didn't do any anything. I did not do anything. The only thing I did was be a victim to a Warwick High School teacher who raped me from the time I was 14 until the time I was 21. And then when I was 21, I could buy my own alcohol, so I didn't need him anymore. He used to tie me to the bed frame and by my wrist. And um, so then in uh, 2004, I think, my, I found out that my niece had been sexually abused. My sister had been sexually abused by a Warwick High School teacher too, or middle school. She was abused in middle school. And Warwick School District punished my father for her being sexually abused by a teacher. They punished him by a $300 fine for truancy. I had to be subjected to my dad dragging my screaming sister down the hallway every day from the time she was 11 until I forget when she moved out with my mom. So there was a divorce and she moved, my sister moved with my mom, but I can't remember if the sexual assault happened before or after the divorce. But my sister was assaulted by a Warwick High School, a Warwick school teacher, sorry, not high school, and um, they charged my dad, find him for truancy. And so I had to listen to the screams every morning as, as he dragged her down the hallway from when she was 11 until, you know, just, it was every day. It was very, very stressful. Oh, my God. And, um, you know, to wake up every morning to this screaming. And we had to be on the bus at, like, 7 and I was an adolescent, and I wasn't getting enough sleep anyway. Yep. Yep. And then, so that's what Warwick did to us. And my sister, who's a genius, did not graduate from high school, from Warwick High School, because uh, she moved in with my mom and dropped out of school completely. And my dad blamed my sister and was, like, I think he took I think he took money out of my sister's account or something. I don't remember all those. You'll have to ask my sister. Whew. Yep. And then they take my daughter from me. And so then in 2004, I find out my niece was had been sexually abused, was being sexually abused. I mean, it's it's not entirely clear, but in solidarity with my niece. I went to the Ephrata barracks of the Pennsylvania State Police. And on my own, I, I wasn't there, you know, this, this was voluntary. And I wanted to tell them because I had never told them about Bill Mollard molesting me from the ages of 14 to 21. And I went in and I talked to the corporal he wasn't just a trooper, he was a corporal, 
and he um, he tried to have me committed to a mental hospital. He would not, he refused to take the report from me about the sexual assault. So I left, and as I was leaving, he chased after me down the driveway, and I tried to pull the, the car door shut um, quickly so that he could not get in, and he wedged himself in there, and then he reached underneath. Let's do this. He had come here, this over here, right? And he reached underneath my seat and he grabbed a prohibited offensive weapon from between my legs, just like this, you see? And he pulled it out and there were no witnesses to that. And he's like, oh, what do we have here? And then he arrested me. And then he brought me back into the barracks and he handcuffed me to a chair for an hour. And I hadn't even done anything. And uh, let's see, oh, so then he charged me with having a prohibited offensive weapon and I went to jail for about two years and solitary confinement, not because I'd done anything bad, but because there was such a backlog in the court system and I didn't have $500 bail. That's why I spent two years in solitary confinement. <clears throat> because a cop manufactured some stupid crime. I spent two years in Lancaster County Prison in solitary confinement awaiting trial. That was not after trial, that was before. And then after the trial, I, I mean, I was found innocent, <laughs> completely innocent. They dismissed the charges of the prohibited defensive weapon, but that didn't matter. I had, I had already served the two years in solitary confinement. Thank you.